Hello, seventh graders. This is my attempt to work on the computer station again in hopes that you can hear me. So today is lesson seven five. I calculate the volume of a prism and cylinder. So uh, starting on page three hundred seventy three, we have a little bit of new vocabulary today. Uh, one being volume and prism and cylinder. Okay, so keep your eye out for those words and fill them in on your vocabulary. So Volume is the measure of the space occupied by a solid. So what can I fit inside? Um, you know, area we kind of thought about that 2D, um, that two-dimensional shape, what just can, what needs to cover it. Um, this is what actually can go inside. So this is in cubic inches um, or cubic feet, so cubic units. And that's just going to be to the third power rather than to the second power. So we are going to be in cubic units for this one. And that is denoted by that to the third power here. So a prism is a 3D figure with two bases that are opposite of each other at 90 degree angles. So for example, here we have a, um, a prism that is a rectangular prism. And here would be a base and its base opposite of it uh, on the other side. So two bases. Here we have a triangular prism. So there is one side and the other side that makes it the base. And the height is denoted um, from one base to another. So from this base to this base, that's your height. And from this base to this base, that's your height. Because obviously you could stand that up um, on bases. So um, volume of a prism is found by doing the base times the height. Um, so what you'd have to know for this is that the base is actually going to be the area of the base. So it's not just going to be one unit, it's area of the base. So in this case for a rectangle, it would be volume equals, well, that's going to be base times height itself, or if it's kind of a square, um, it's going to be the base times height of the little guy, then times the height. Notice that you would be multiplying three units, units times units times units, which is what gives you units squared. In this case, since that's a triangle, the area of that base would be one half base times height and then times the height. So again, um, it's not just the capital B stands for the area of that base. So to find the volume of the rectangular prism, we have to decide um, what our base is. So we're going to use the formula base times height. And notice that the base is a rectangle, so we use length times width um, to fill in there and then times height. So just change your formula. And again, showing your work is very important. So we fill in. We use this as our base. This part of the rectangle here as our base, 9 times 5, and then times that height of 6.5 centimeters. Work that out, and you get... It is supposed to simplify, which means the volume is 292.5 cubic centimeters. And that could be written again as centimeters cubed. So starting on page 374, this is an example of a triangular prism. Uh, remember, the base of a triangular prism are triangles. So we have to use, and we can flip it on its side. So it's not this bottom part. It's a, this part is our base, so if you don't want to put your standing on its side, that'd be fine, but that's going to be the units you use for your base. So our formula again is base times height, when the base is actually the part, um, the area of that side. So we do the area of that triangle with a base of 6 and a height of 7. Then we multiply times the height, which then our height is 10. So then we get 210, so that means that the volume is 210 cubic inches, or inches cubed. Here are a couple for you to try, and I have my mouse, so I might set them up for you and see if you can solve. So again, for A, you're going to use vo volume equals area of the base times the height. You have to realize that your base is going to be this side 
and this guy. So you notice it has a 3 by 8.5. So we're actually going to do 3 feet times 8.5. And, and that has multiplied by a height then of 13. Okay, so work that out and make sure you label correctly. For B, we're still using volume is the base area times the height. Our base is this triangle here, our base area. So we're going to use our triangular area, so that's one half base of eight, height of five, times the total height of this prism of twelve. You work that out, make sure you do the units correctly. And then lastly, C. C again is a rectangular or really it's a square, so it could be a cube since all the dimensions are the same. So we're going to do volume equals base times height, where your base is going to be 10 times 10 times then a whole height of 10. Okay, remember all those being cubic units. We can bring those and uh, check them in class. Um, a cylinder now is different than a prism. A cylinder is a solid with bases that are congruent, parallel triangles um, connected with a curved side. So this is like a soup can, um, an oatmeal canister, um, anything else you can think of that's a cylinder shape. Um, you have to use a formula. Base times height again, but now this time the base would be the area of um, the circle. Okay, so we have to know our area of a circle formula. So you can estimate the volume of a cylinder in example 3 to be about 3 times 7 squared times 20, because we would use half the diameter for the radius. So you check our reasonableness. Notice it says round to the nearest tenth. And that's because we're going to be using pi. So since the diameter here is 13 feet, uh, we are really going to use the radius. We're going to cut that in half. I know that the radius then would be six and a half. Half of thirteen would be the radius. So this is our formula. Since the base is a circle for a cylinder, we actually use the formula for the area of a circle and then multiply that times the height. So we plug in what we know about the radius. Plug in six and a half. Then we use our PEMDAS, and we know that exponents would come first, and then we multiply by pi and multiply by 20. So just remember that in your calculator, this is the part you do first. So we get that. We round it to the nearest tenth. So the volume is about 2,654 and 6 tenths cubic feet, or again, that's feet cubed. Down here, for these examples, you would want to draw a picture. So I would start with having a circle. And this could be a little strange since um, I'm just drawing with the mouse, not on the computer. So bear with me. Let's see if I can get this worked out. So I'm going to bring this down, this one down. You can draw um, a cylinder by doing two circles, imagining those the same size. Um, and then doing some lines to get you an idea of what that would look like. So cylinder's kind of like one of those bank tubes you put your money in. That's kind of neat. Or in that time, it looks like sunglasses. Um, it's an idea of what a cylinder would look like. So just give yourself a picture. Your drawing might be a little bit better than mine. Um, this one and then it gives you the information. So it gives us a radius. We draw a radius of 2 inches. And it gives us a height of 7. This one gives us a diameter of 18. So then we know our radius is half as much for a radius of 9 centimeters and the height of 5. Obviously, it's quite proportional. Uh, but here, then we can use that same thing. So for this one, you're going to do my volume is my base area. So that's going to be pi times the radius squared times the height of 7. So you remember in your calculator you're going to do 2 squared first, which is 4, and times pi 
10 times 7. So then work that out. Check those ones. Over here, same type of deal. We're going to do the volume is the base area. So pi times our radius of 9, half the diameter. Square times our height of 5. So really, 81 times pi times 5. Remember to label in the correct units when you work those out. Composite solids. So this is kind of a combination of our composite figures. This is where you're going to um, have composite solids. So a volume, objects that are made up of more than one type of solid. So just like composite figures, but now we have solid shapes. So you just decompose a figure into solids whose volumes you do know how to find, and then you'll add them up together or subtract depending on what it's looking for. So for number four here, Tanya uses beads shaped like cubes to make jewelry. Each bead is a um, circular hole through the mil middle. Find the volume of each bead. So we're looking for the volume here. So it has a little estimation tip on the left. So we're going to find the volume of the rectangular prism first. That's 12 by 12. So we do the volume is base times height. So the volume of the base of 12 by 12. So the volume of the base times then the height. Find the volume of the cylinder in the center there. So the base times the height. So our, we have a diameter of 2. So that means we're going to have a radius of 1. So work that out, and that's 37.7, which means that we do the volume of the prism minus the volume of the cylinder. So therefore, we get 1,690.3 cubic millimeters. Okay, so you can picture it's a um, bead is square and has a hole through the center. There's another example down here. Um, the ecology club is building birdhouses, similar to the one shown at the right. To put in the nature preserve, find the volume of the birdhouse. Okay, so we're going to find the volume of the birdhouse. So this may be, notice we have attached a, we have a triangular prism on the top. And then we have a rectangular prism, that was a really good picture, on the bottom. So in this case, you're going to add those ones together. So the volume equals, the volume equals. And this is going to be the base times the height, both of them are. But for a, rec for a triangular prism, it's going to be one half the base times the height times the height. And for the rectangular prism, it's going to be length times width or base times height times height again. Okay? So why don't you give that one a try? Pause right now if you're going to, because I'm going to show the answer here in a second, and then make sure they match up. So you should get 228 square uh, square inches, and really that should be cubic inches there, since it's volume. Okay, so rewatch the video, check out somebody else's. Hopefully you can hear me and look at examples in your book.